Okay, the title of this slide is Things Aren't Always As They Seem. Beware. The following appears to be an exponential growth function, but in reality, well, the reason that I say that this looks like an exponential growth function is because our base is 2, and if b is greater than 1, we have what's known as exponential growth. However, if we do a little bit of manipulation, we're going to get a different outcome that you, than you may have thought. So one of the goals when you're trying to graph is that before you graph, you want the coefficient of x to be positive 1. And right now, you'll see that it's negative, it's negative 1. So I'm going to do a few manipulations, and something pretty interesting is going to happen. The first manipulation that I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the position of the 3 and the negative x in the exponent. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from the exponent. Notice that as I factored out that negative 1, the plus 3 turned into a minus 3. If you're not sure of that, you could always redistribute the negative in your head just to check. Now, the next thing that I'd like you to do is focus on this right here. It's 2 raised to the negative, and of course that's really a negative 1. Now remembering your rules of exponents, what is 2 to the negative 1? Well, you might remember that 2 to the negative 1 is really 1 half. So interestingly enough, this problem in the end is y equals 1 half to the x minus 3. And you'll notice that our base is actually 1 half. So what seemed like it was exponential growth in the end became exponential decay because our b value is between 0 and 1. And the rule is, you don't want to assess whether it's exponential growth or decay unless you've made the coefficient of x positive 1. So this right here is the most important thing of all to remember. When you're dealing with exponential functions, before you make the classification as to whether it's growth or decay, you need to make sure the coefficient of x is positive 1. Here, it is negative 1, but after doing these manipulations, here, it is positive 1. And then we can say, okay, our base is now a half, so it's exponential decay. And one last thought, because of this right here, we know that this graph has moved three units to the right. Okay, so here's an example of things that aren't always as they seem, part two. Beware. Number four, the base in this exponential function appears to be positive two, but in reality, now on the slide before, we said that we can't classify an exponential function as growth or decay unless the coefficient of the exponent were positive one. And right now it's a negative three, so we're going to have to do some manipulation. And I'm going to start by swapping the positions of the 1 and the negative 3x. That's going to get me y equals 2 to the negative 3x plus 1. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 3 from the exponent. By doing this, I'm left with y equals 2 to the negative third times x minus 1 third. Now, if you're not sure exactly how I did that, you could always redistribute to check what I did and make sure you understand where that all came from. Now, like the last example, what we're left with is this very awkward situation right here. 2 to the negative third. It's just sort of hanging around. Now, 2 to the negative third, if you think to your rules of exponents, 2 to the negative third is really 1 over 2 cubed, or one eighth. So this can be rewritten one other time as y equals one eighth to the x minus one third. Now because this b value, this base, is a fraction between zero and one, we have exponential decay. The base is one eighth. At first we thought the base was two, so that's kind of a big change. And we also know because of the, the minus one third in our exponent that this graph will be shifted one-third units to the right. So just remember, when working with exponential functions, things aren't always as they seem, particularly when the coefficient of x in the exponent is negative.
Okay, so on our final slide, we address the question, where in real life will we see exponential functions? And I've come up with three examples. The first one might be population growth or decay. Let's say you were the mayor of a certain town and you wanted to anticipate how many firemen or how many policemen or how many teachers needed to be hired over the next decade. That mayor might set up a study to do a population growth or decay to figure out what the population is going to be over the next decade so these uh, decisions can be made. So there's an example of when a, an exponential growth or decay model might be used. Another example would be if you're a scientist, specifically a chemist, looking at radioactive half-life questions. And I know that many of my students when we study this say, oh, we, we did problems like this in my chemistry class. A third example is if you're in a math class and you're studying geometric sequences. These are a pattern of numbers which are affected by multiplying. So let's say I had a number that started like at 1 and I multiplied each time by, just let's keep it simple, let's say we multiply by 2 each time. So 1 times 2 is 2 and then I multiply by 2 again, this is 4 and then I multiply by 2 again, this is 8, and I multiply by 2 again, this is 16, etc., etc. This is an example of a geometric progression, and if you were to graph these points, you would get a graph that looks like exponential growth. So here are three examples of where we might see exponential functions.